Praise be Jesus and Mary. Today we celebrate the Feast of the Sacred Heart of Jesus. Tomorrow we will celebrate the Feast of the Immaculate Heart of Mary. And it's beautiful how these two feasts are put together on the liturgical calendar. We can see the mind of the church here, putting the Sacred Heart of Jesus alongside the Immaculate Heart of Mary, and that these two devotions go together, always together. Now, we can say that devotion to the Sacred Heart began right in the womb of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Our Lady says yes to the Archangel Gabriel. She is overshadowed by the power of the Holy Spirit, who then forms in her womb the body of the Son of God. Okay, and his heart is formed, and at a certain point begins to beat. Okay, and that is something that changes the world. That is something new on the world scene. Okay, the beating of the heart of the Son of God, loving the world from the womb of the Virgin Mary. And we can say that at that moment, the Sacred Heart of Jesus and the Immaculate Heart of Mary are beating in unison. They are always united. They are always one. They are always burning with love. They are united in willing what the Father wills. They are united in loving the human race and desiring the salvation and sanctification of everyone. The heart of the Redeemer, the heart of the co-redemptrix. And so it remains this way throughout their lives here on earth. Their hearts are always beating as one until consummated on the cross. And isn't it appropriate that our Lord's mission would finish, so to speak, when his heart is pierced with the lance and then blood and water comes forth. It's like his heart was overflowing with graces and mercy and so had to be pierced and to flow forth upon the whole world. And as Simeon prophesied, our lady's heart too would be pierced with a sword. Right? Her compassion, the heart of the co-redemptrix, mystically pouring forth graces as well, the mediatrix of all graces. And so then we come up to the time of the revelations given to Saint Margaret Mary Alacoque, the sacred heart of Jesus still burning with love for mankind. And what does he say? How his heart is wounded and pierced by the ingratitude and indifference of mankind. This heart which has loved us so much poured himself out for us and over the centuries met for the most part with indifference and ingratitude. There are few who love Jesus Christ. And so our Lord comes to reveal this to St. Margaret Mary and ask for reparation, right? This is very much a part of devotion to the Sacred Heart and what our Lord wants, reparation made, okay? That we consecrate ourselves to his Sacred Heart, that we enthrone his Sacred Heart in our homes, and that we make prayers and supplications in reparation, that we come and adore his sacred heart in the Eucharist. Remember the miracle of Lanciano when it, they had the scientists come and examine, you know, what was that all about? What's, what's going on here? What did this change into? What did they find out? That it turned into cardiac muscle. 
right? the Eucharist, at the words of consecration, at the Mass, changed into heart, flesh from a human's heart. And we know who or which human that is. It is Jesus Christ. His heart in the Eucharist, still beating with love for the human race, still pouring forth graces and mercy, still met with indifference and ingratitude. And so, let's ask Our Lady to make our hearts beat in unison with hers, with overflowing love and gratitude and recognition for the love of the Sacred Heart of Jesus, the love that he has for each and every one of us. And let us strive to make reparation and by our prayers and sacrifices, draw all hearts <clears throat> to the Sacred Heart of Jesus. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.